Cabinet approves national authority to battle drug addiction. Cost of living committee to place price ceiling on rice. Opposition to request debate on Minister Malik Samaravikrama's actions in signing Singapore FTA. President Trump announces second North Korea summit in Vietnam. Now the new district organizers of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party for Puttalam as well as electorate organizers in the Anuradhapura district received their appointment letters from President Maitri Pala Sirisena yesterday. The new district organizers and the electorate organizers received the letters at the President's office in the Parliament. Dashrita Pereira has been appointed as the new district organizer of the SLFP for Puttalam. Duminda Disanayaka has been appointed as the electorate organizer of Kalaveva and Veera Kumar Disanayaka has been appointed as the electorate organizer of Horoputana. Tissa Karaliadda has been appointed as the electorate organizer for Madhavachya, DBA Kanayaka as the organizer for West Anuradhapura. WK Ilanga Singha has been appointed as the electorate organizer of Mihintalaya. Prema Sirihetiarachi and DP Bandusena were appointed Anuradhapura East organizers while Rohan Jayakodi was made the organizer for Kakirava. B.B. Disanayaka, M. Herat Bandara and M. R. B. Gunatilaka were appointed as district organizers for the Anuradhapura district. Now the parliament is due to convene at 1 p.m. today. Stay tuned to News First for the latest updates on the parliamentary proceedings as we bring to you the very latest right from the parliament. Moving on, our cabinet today approved the establishment of a national authority to re rehabilitate those addicted to drugs. This was based on a proposal put forward by President Maitri Pala Sirisena. Another cabinet proposal to import equipment that can be used to identify toxic drugs has also been approved. This action is being taken in line with the Matin Nidhasratak National Drug Eradication Program. Cabinet also approved a national action plan to battle corruption. The plan is set to take effect between 2019 and 2023. The plan aims to end corruption in both state and other organizations. The amended national housing policy has received the approval of the cabinet. The amended national housing policy was presented to cabinet by Minister of Housing, Construction and Cultural Affairs Sajid Premadasa. The cabinet has also approved that paddy of the Mahakanya of 2018 and 2019 to be purchased at the certified price. Thereby, 1 kilogram of Samba paddy will be purchased at 41 rupees and 1 kilogram of Nadu paddy will be purchased at 38 rupees. The cabinet has approved 5,000 million rupees for the above purpose. Now in more news from the political arena, the UPFA parliamentary group has decided to call for a debate on the conduct of Minister Malik Samaravikrama when inking the Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement. The decision was reached at a meeting with the opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksha last evening. MPV Malvira Vansa had reportedly presented a proposal to call for a debate on the matter. Speaking to News First, UPFA General Secretary Mahinda Amaravira said at the party leaders' meeting a request will be made for a debate. Now in more news in the political arena, here are some of the views expressed in the political arena about the proposed national government concept. Like before, if we bring everyone together, we can achieve a lot. That is where our political strength lies. The opposition tried to do this by buying our MPs. When they do it, it is okay, but when others do it, it is wrong. Sometimes it is possible that we could not fulfill the aspirations of our party members and those who supported us over the last three years. We will have to face a lot of challenges. What national government for eight months? The term will be over soon. This process is to solve the internal problem in the party. We as a party decided to vote against this national government. All SLFP and UPF MPs as a party decided to vote against this national government. They are on that side, but they must also vote against this proposal. If they do otherwise, we will have to take action. <laughs> <laughs> 
We have always had national governments in this country. According to the 19th Amendment, we can have national governments in this country. As for the current situation, no single party can get a majority. So we need a national government if we are to have stability. So we have taken this decision to strengthen the government. The UNP is aware that they cannot avoid defeat at the next election. So this act is to increase the number of ministers to appease their MPs to stop them from coming at the leader's neck when they lose. We are not trying to create a national government that was seen in the past. We had to revert from 48 to 30 ministers earlier. So a lot of those who are doing good work have had to stop suddenly. Our plan is not to go to 48, but to increase it constitutionally to a certain extent. We feel we could achieve a lot moving forward. Local news. Vegetable farmers in Kalpitiya are facing severe difficulties as they do not receive a fair price for their produce. Farmers in Kalpitiya have cultivated crops including cabbage and radish this season. They state that during this period where they are reaping the harvest, the prices of these vegetables have decreased. The farmers state that they find it difficult to even cover the cost at the current prices. The government asks us to cultivate and then we are left with the excess. The price is very low because there is excess supply. Now moving on, the Health Development Bureau held a press conference together with its Leprosy Eradication Unit in line with World Leprosy Day. We know that leprosy is a disease that is among us. Many people are affected by it. There are reportedly around 2,000 here. We are working to make this number zero and to completely eradicate this by 2020. We will have to come up with special programs to remove the disease and identify those patients that are hidden too. It is vital that treatment is received for these as treatment ensures that the illness will not spread. It is also ideal if we could identify it early. Over the last 10 years, around 2,000 leprosy patients have been reported annually. Around 41% of this is from here in the Western Province. The percentage of kids below 15 is around 10%. Now reports on how lives of residents in Colombo are adversely affected by the inefficient disposal of garbage and the lack of maintenance of sewage systems are plenty. Yet another such situation arose in Dean's Road in Maradana, gravely inconveniencing the public. Sewage system on Dean's Road has inconvenienced the people on multiple occasions. Commuters travelling past this road in Maradana have had to cover their noses to get past the stench that arises due to the overflowing of the sewage tank. While there is a sub-office of the Colombo Municipal Council in close proximity to this area, the signboard states that a health officer, city analyst and a maternity and children's welfare office are also in that same building. They show up at that time. They use the hose for about an hour and then leave. Then it happens again. Now the attention of the cost of living committee has been drawn towards imposing, imposing rather, price controls for rice. Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture, KDS Ruan Chandra, stated that majority of the members in the Cost of Living Committee demanded a price control for rice at a time where paddy has a control price. Meanwhile, the Secretary to the Ministry of Agriculture noted that the final decision on the request made to increase the prices of gas and milk powder will be taken by the Cost of Living Committee next week. Now the residents of about 40 houses in Vabada and Ambaralua in Gampaha were gravely inconvenienced by strong winds that blew across the area. Residents state that a strong wind blew across the area at about 3 p.m. This is the impact of the strong winds had on houses nearby. Residents said that the windy conditions persisted for about 20 minutes.
Taking a jog back into your local news now, Diane Gomez, a very well-known personality here in Colombo, was awarded the credentials of Consulate General of Georgia in Colombo recently. The event was held under the auspices of Ambassador Asashvili, who represents Georgia in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. We are very happy that we managed, with the joint efforts, to open the first ever Georgian Honorary Consulate in Sri Lanka. Also, I want to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt congratulations to friendly Sri Lankan people on the occasion of the 71st anniversary of independence. We hope to forge strong relations between the two countries through the newly established consulate where we could live up to Sri Lanka's age-old diplomatic principles. The consulate is barely a few weeks, yet we are all set to strengthen political, cultural and economic ties between the two countries. Now in your sports news, promotional activities of the Sports First Alliance Platinum Awards was held for the 22nd day in the Hambantara district today. Sports First Allianz Platinum Awards 2018 Platinum Award Ceremony is organized to assess and award talented sportsmen and women in the country within the years of 2017 and 2018. Today is the 22nd consecutive day of promotional activities of the Sports First Alliance Platinum Awards. The promotional activities were held today at the Debravava National School in the Hambantota District. Zonal Director of Education A.D. Samanthi, representatives of the Capital Maharaja Organization and Alliance attended the event. The program included several colorful displays and baseball, rugby and football sports were introduced to sportsmen and women in the district. Cricketer Chatra Jainath from the Debravava National School and athlete Binadi Malsha from the Suryavava National School won the silver and bronze awards in the district respectively. Nithmi Megavarna from the Hambantota Debravava National School won the platinum award gold medal for the best sports personality in the district. You're joining me on the 22nd consecutive day of the promotional campaign which is held in parallel with the Sports First Alliance Platinum Award. Right now we are here at the Dembaravagawa National, National School. It's here where the main program for the Sports First Alliance Platinum Award is held. Many colorful displays and sports such as football, rugby and baseball will be introduced here at the Dembaravagawa National School. Throughout our journey, from Raktapura to Hambantota, we did not forget to get the blessings from the Ruhuna Kataragama Mahadeva this morning, along with blessings and well wishes. Right now, here, as I mentioned, we are at the Dembara Baba National School. In lead of today's promotional activities, as well, we have officials from the Educational Ministry, from the Capital Maharaja Organization, and Alliance. Throughout our journey across and around the island, our next stop will be in Matara, bringing you the latest updates from the only award which is the only award which felicitates the young blood of the nation who brought glory both through international and the national level. Bringing you the very latest updates from the Sport First Alliance Platinum Award for the News First team, I'm John Fernando. Sports First Alliance Platinum Awards 2018. Well, that's a wrap of your lunchtime news for today. It's been a pleasure having you for the News First team. I've been Deshan Gonal, but don't forget, you can stay tuned to more of the very latest on our Live at 55 bulletins and also on our award-winning website, www.newsfirst.lk. Good day.